Hey guys, this week was a welcome back to another Thursday stream where, yes, we'll be covering the news as we always do, ready for leaderboard weekend. So let me know in the chat what's your thing for this weekend. What are you going to be doing, guys? You're going top five, top ten, just chilling like me. Yeah, believe it or not, bit of a hectic weekend this weekend. So I'm just chilling this weekend, uh, doing 25k, completing the uh, totalizer, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, see how it goes. But let me know in the chat. Let me know how you uh, how you're going to do. This weekend and what your target is It'll be interesting to see uh so load of little things to cover today uh so what we'll be doing oh god uh so we'll be covering uh the transformers earth war stream some little snippets that they've sort of um said is happening over the next couple of weeks so we're going to be covering that uh we'll be covering the newsletter as normal um then we're going to be um talking a bit about the top 10 things that i would like coming to Transformers Earth Wars. So, this and you guys might differ. Put it in the chat if you think there's something you really want to see come to Earth Wars. Could it be a bot? Could it be a change to the game? Could it be a buff to a certain bot? Anything you think of. So, top 10 things that you think uh, would come to Transformers Earth Wars, what you'd like to see. So, I'm going to give my opinion today and let you guys know what I'd like to see. Uh, and there's a lot of talk about five-star batches. So, I think it's about time... That we start our five star predictions. So I'm going to get onto the uh, content creators this weekend, try and get them to do a video next week with their opinions, and then grind time as always. Normally collates the figures and uh, have a bit of a you know a bit of competition, just see who wins from the competition. And then uh, I was going to do it next week, and it's bit of a rush job, but I've decided to do it this week uh, before leaderboard. Uh, we're going to be doing our thirty dollar gift card giveaway to our platinum members. So I did say a while ago that. Uh, once I get to a certain number, I'll up it. So once we get to we're at seven platinum members at the minute, once we get to 10 platinum members, I'm going to make it a $50 gift card, guys. So if you want to become a member, you want to support my channel and be in with a $50 gift card chance every two months, then let's get three more members in, get to 10 members, and it's $50 gift card, guys. Uh, so yeah, we'll be doing that giveaway at the end of the stream. And then we'll be talking about my targets for the leaderboard, things like that, and things I've been doing throughout the week and things like that so yeah like i said lots of little snippets in the stream today so uh yeah be a be a cool stream so uh before we start though before we say hellos uh i want to ask you guys a question it's been burning me all day so um i'm drinking a milkshake today for a change uh normally drink a bit of juice or something or water but i'm drinking milkshake today and the big question is have you tried mcdonald's fries in a mcdonald's milkshake i haven't tried it and i heard about it months ago and forgot all about it and someone reminded me of it today was, it sounds disgusting but everyone's going on about it how good it is and how lit it is and i want to try it but it sounds disgusting how but how would you put food in a drink but yeah oh god let me know but yeah i see people in the chat saying yeah i tried it it's good and it's nasty and yeah Give it a try and let me know because, um, yeah, MD Prime's put sweet and salty. Well, we'll wait and see. I do like salty popcorn. I do like a bit of sweet and salt, but it just seems too weird for me. Maybe I'm too old for that sort of stuff. But, yeah, fries and milkshake just, don't know, doesn't sound right. But, uh, anyway, let's uh, let's say how hello, see who we've got in the chat. So, we have got uh, Chris Harmon first. I think he's been a member and welcome to be in the chat first. Penny Lancaster sorry you were second uh but a close second uh then we've got grind time thanks for joining brother my brother from another mother um then we've got sg soundwave at md prime all you guys sun sticker was a sash crystal just to be in the chat early you're welcome hit me up after the stream say was a i want to see sticker was a sash crystal just be in the chat early you're welcome. Uh, then we've got Earn Chill. We've got uh, Bricks Motion. Uh, we've got... Who have we got? Who else have we got? Uh, a lot of talk about the leaderboard. Then we've got Autobot Phil, Chris Trudden. We've got Alpha Tryon, uh, Carnage McKight. Uh We've got... Who else have we got? Thomas Rook as well. Uh, send a holiday my way. Uh, and we've got uh, Power Driver as well. Looks like Power Driver New Zealand, is that NZ? I don't know. If so, that's pretty cool, joining from New Zealand, but maybe it's not. I don't know. But yeah, thanks to everyone for joining. I uh, appreciate it, like I said. So yeah, let's jump straight into the newsletter as normal, and then uh, we'll go from there. So, 
So, this weekend's event is obviously The Cure. So, we've got the new healers, which we covered last week. We've also posted the video. So, if you've not seen them yet, go and check them out. Uh, really cool bots. Don't be put off by me not going for them this weekend. Really, really cool. Honestly, uh, well worth the investment for a change, let's be honest. Uh, finally. So, uh, yeah, five-star bot for top five, four-star bot for top ten. Uh, a lot better uh, structure. So, yeah, really cool event. So, uh, yes, Minerva and Flatline event. It's a typical leaderboard event, which, yes, it is geared towards top alliances. We see a lot of complaints about people uh, saying that it's geared towards the top guys. And, yeah, it is, sadly. You know, it is one of them events that is. Whereas the chance events are more geared towards, you know, low to medium players. Because they've got more of a chance, or at least same chance, really, as the top guys. Let's be honest. So, yeah. Uh, normal battle zones apply, and if you are doing this uh, leaderboard weekend and you are cup lagooning, guys, or lagooning, go and check out my lagoon videos. Every time a leaderboard comes around, I always say this, I always say, listen, guys, if you're going to be spending some serious money on leaderboard weekend, go and check out my cup lagoon videos first. Go give them a watch. It'll give you a lot of pointers, a lot of help, and probably save you a bit of money as well. So go and check them out, guys. So, yes, uh, Spark, Combiner Spark, this is the main things that I want, the Combiner Spark and things like that, and the shards. As I said before, I'm saving all my shards when the five-star bots uh, or five-star combiners come out, whenever that might be. Um, so, yes, saving my G-Metal power cores as well. So, this is the thing that's really important to me, really. Uh, getting all those nice um, rewards. Then, leaderboard structure, like we said, top five, five-star, top ten, four-star, three-star throughout. Uh, some cool shards and character shards, event crystals, and uh, some total spark crystals as well. So, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, and obviously, event crystals have a chance at the four star, not a chance at the five star, sadly, uh, but chance at the four star and then shards as well. Uh, Sire Pass catch up, is it worth buying? Um, I'm not too sure. I spoke to Dale about this. Like, I've finished the uh, Sire Pass up to the uh, skin core. I'm just almost at that skin core, which I'll get over the weekend. Uh, and for $20, I could have bought the Total Spark Crystals. But I think it's like 15 Total Spark Crystals, which for $20 is not worth it. But if it was 30 Total Spark Crystals, maybe, maybe. And I said that to Dale. I said, listen, if you up the rewards a bit for the uh, Total Spark Crystals, I might even buy that bundle just to get them. But that's up to them. Uh, so obviously we've got the uh, Total Attack Bundle and Golden Lagoon Bundles this weekend. Uh, and yes, as I said earlier, it's for uh, Minerva and Flatline. Looking really good. Uh, and like I said, if you've not uh, seen them in action yet, guys, then uh, yeah, go and uh, check them out. So uh, you can see here, this is the uh, leaderboard uh, stats for the last leaderboard. Thanks to uh, Tex for posting these. And uh, yes, 146k was the average for top five and 78k for top 10. So I believe that's a pretty decent improvement uh, on the uh, previous one. So it's good to see that, you know, leaderboards are you know coming back with a with a uh, with a vengeance and uh Tex has stolen my little Transformers Earth Wars uh, insignia that I made in blue. Uh, no, I didn't steal it. I give it him to fair. He asked me, he's like, what's that? How did you get that? How did you get it in blue? I was like, yeah, I just go into this and do this and do that. He's like, can you send it me? I was like, yeah, of course I can, bud. Of course I can. Uh, so, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I do like these little things that Tex does, these little uh, stats. They are pretty cool. And he does spend a lot of time, you know, collating these figures. So, props to him. Uh, there's some uh, Minerva stats, like I said, you can check that out in the uh, newsletter, uh, or like I said, you can go and watch my stream and go through the uh, the stats and the facts. And to the content creators, uh, we've got uh, my video of my no skill spams team, which was a snippet from the previous uh, stream. So it was a really fun team that I used. And uh, yeah, it's worth a check out, guys. Like I said, pretty uh, pretty fun. And then uh, we've got our own Grind Times uh, video on medics, which I believe that was a snippet from a stream. It looked like it was anyway. Uh, I said to Grind Time, we need to start doing this really. You know, it just makes more content out of, you know, less time really rather than doing videos and doing streams do your stream put your content in there let people that want to watch the stream watch it people that don't want to watch your stream or haven't got the time can watch snippets of it in a, in videos so yeah go and check that out guys where it compares all the medics uh i actually only compared uh, minerva to wheeljack and ratchet so it's worth checking it out guys cool 
Okie doke. Uh, and then we, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned filling out the survey and asked everyone to, you know, it's important that we fill out these surveys, guys, because this fee is feedback for the apes and it determines how they sort of shape the game over the next six months till the next survey um and from this we got a lot of uh you know prime league buffs and change to events and structures in the game and uh it's really important like i said that we fill these sort of in so props to everyone that did well done um and five people have got some 500 five star shards so uh pr just for filling it in so yeah decent congratulations to the winners and we've got community corner we've got a uh, nice collection there that's pretty cool collection uh some cool drawings as well pretty cool uh and yes it is finally week six of the saga so it is super xp leaderboard weekend like we said and then we start a new saga next week so covering uh covering the stream from earlier on so some uh sort of news that you may not have heard um uh well you may have heard you may not have heard but yeah uh covering a bit of news so what's uh the new things that they're sort of bringing to the game so uh i asked about the five star batch a couple of other people did say so, you know when's it coming and um, five star combiners i ask it every stream because i want to know myself um and they said that the next five star batch is probably coming in the next two months so not this saga but the next one and that normally means a five star event as well so can't wait for that do i pull from the batch don't i depends what bots are going to be in it that's the big thing for me is it going to be combined a bots but they did say something interesting about that, which we'll talk a bit about later when we do our predictions. But um, it'd be a bit of a new thing for five-star batches. A bit of a change, which could be interesting. Is it a good change or not? We'll talk about that as well later on. But yeah, a bit of a change to the five-star batches. Um, they did mention in the uh, next uh, battle pass, I think they said, was that um, they're going to be... Uh, including cooldown skips, which should be pretty cool, you know, but then be careful because a cooldown skip, you're skipping one bot or skipping seven uh, or eight even, it'd be the same cost, I think. Um, you'll just press a sort of cooldown skips and it looks like you're going to get multiple within the battle pass, so you might get 10 or 15, so it's like cyber coins, but not cyber coins. And they get why they do this in the economy, rather than giving you something where they give you cyber coins and you can spend it on anything, they sort of funnel you into one aspect so you could just give cyber coins but they'll give cyber coins because you could use it on build bots could use it on bots could use it on research so what they do is rather than giving you cyber coins they filter it down to cooldown skips so instead uh so that's the idea uh there's gonna be an update uh i think next week um maybe the week after uh hoping next week where zen fam will be available for seven days so that's a that's a good change that's a cool change uh i'm all for that so when you finish the event maybe a small event and you're done for the weekend you can go and do some more zen farming you know i'm all for anything that uh increases choice completely um and then we've got some new uh skin cores coming so we can have a quick look at them so let's change over to our game scene we can have a quick look at them so we can see them here so the new uh cores coming are g2 grimlock and uh energon dive bomb so uh i'm not too keen on grimlock i'm not gonna lie the purple core looks a bit strange to me uh but dive bomb looks really good i was actually impressed with dive bomb um but yeah these are new skin cores that are going to be available in the next battle pass so the next question is that when you look at the uh main screen of the game loading up uh sg soundwave is still on there and we've not had him yet so will he be a skin core will he be the next chance bot that's a big question we've got to ask so um yeah we'll have to wait and see but uh sg uh soundway will probably be coming to the game soon so that'll be uh pretty cool but the question is who will be the bot alternative will we have more minions in the game hmm well victory star was put there what about uh shattered glass wheeljack yeah it, well, it might be wheeljack even but i'm not too sure it'd be a healer i don't know and big smoke just put it's blue not purple no it's definitely purple what do you guys see? I see purple. Maybe I'm colorblind, but I see purple, definitely. <laughs> definitely purple. It's Decepticon. Of course it's purple. 
but yeah, I can't wait for SG uh, Soundwave and maybe SG uh, Wheeljack, maybe. Uh, will they come out at the same time? Will one be a, um, you know, battle pass? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, the r -Shop mentioned that um, Blur and Runabout will be available in the Crystals this weekend. Um, so if you've got any Crystals stashed up and you want a chance at Blur and Runabout, it's going to be a pretty small chance, let's be honest. Um, but yeah. Look at that. I think that's really cool. Honestly, Energon Dive Bomb. I think we need some more Energon bots in the game. I really do. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the series, but after playing Transformers Legends and then playing um, Battle Tactics, there were some cool Energon bots, some cool looking bots. So, um be good to see some more Energon bots in the game. So, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, and then they just talked about uh, they are trying to rebalance Ultra Magnus and Galvatron. And I talked to Grand Time about this previously. Um, and, oh, sorry, yeah. Sorry, well, the Grimlock Core is SG, so G2, sorry. Uh, and this is um, Energon Skin Core. So, apologies. Um, but um, with the uh, Ultra Magnus and Galvatron uh, rebalance, um, personally, I think they need to make them the same. Plain and simple. And they need to basically give Ultra Magnus Galvatron's ability. I really do think so. Uh, Ultra Magnus' ability is far too random. It really is. It's far too random. I don't like his pathing either. I think the, the whole bot needs a rework. I, I can't really comment on Galvatron as much. Um, but Ultra Magnus is probably one of the worst five stars in the game. He's definitely up there. Um, and, yeah, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not too keen. Um... But, yeah, I'm hoping that playtesters and the apes can rebalance it. Uh, they also mentioned that Ability 11 will be another couple of weeks. They've had a few setbacks, uh, but Ability 11 is coming soon. Uh, I'm saving all my spark for that in preparation. And uh, they said they're going to try to do quite a few five stars in this next batch because it's been too long since the last one. So I'm looking forward to that as well. So, yeah, onwards and uh, onwards and upwards. Um, then they sort of mentioned dispatch missions. So uh, we're going to have a look at this, I think. Uh, uh, if we can sort of find it now, let's fast forward a bit. Uh, but in terms of dispatch missions, they said that um, the idea will be is that you'll send your uh, bots out. Um, and you can see there, so you've got first line of defense. So you need some warriors. And then that could be, what it says there, the two, it means you can use two bots, anything you want. And you see there that uh, you'll send them out on missions. Uh, you'll get some Z energy on. You'll get some XP for all, their, all your bots as well. Uh, they said that the uh, prizes will change depending on the missions. Uh, the longer the mission, the better the rewards. So it still needs to be balanced. Uh, there is more missions going to be unlocked as well. Uh, but you can see there, that one's a three day, that one's a one day. Uh, but what they mentioned is, guys, that I'm not too keen about personally, but they said that once you send these bots out, they are gone. They are not there for war. They are not there for Z Energon. They are not there for raids. They are not there. Once you send them out, they are gone. So for me, this is only good for your lower down bots and your alt faction bots. I wouldn't put my war team in this and lose them for three days. So your top bots... I'm not going to go in these missions. But they did say that missions will be quite easy or have uh, low expectations in terms of bot power. Um, so it's not too bad, like I said. But I would have preferred I could have my... Again, I'm all for choice. You know, why restrict us? Um, personally, I would like to be able to choose. I would like to choose if I send my uh, war team out or not. And then still keep my war team for wars. Why not? Why limit it like that? And I get that in, if you look at it as like a law thing, if you're sending out on a mission, then you haven't got them. But, um, you know, I don't know. I like the idea. I think it's absolutely brilliant. You know, put them in mission, go to work, come home. Hopefully they come back or in a day or two. Absolutely brilliant idea. Uh, great. Love it. Um, I just prefer a, bit, I prefer a bit more flexibility. That's what I prefer. Cool. Okay. Um, check out anything else on dispatch missions. Uh, they did say that it will go off your bot power. So the higher bot power you are, um, the higher missions uh spe specification. I nearly got it out. Uh, the higher the mission specification in terms of bot power will be required. So in terms of your alt faction, if you've not really used them, then the bot requirement will be really low, so you can do it. So that's a good idea, and that's pretty cool as uh, as well. Um. But yeah, it's uh, it's still in balancing. Um, I don't think that playtests have got it yet. Uh, so 
it's very early stage. It's gonna be in a couple of weeks, but I think playtesting will just be sort of looking over values of my like, lengths of some of the uh, missions, things like that. Um, but yeah, uh, they also mentioned that hopefully they're gonna get Perry Blaze, and I hope they do. Um, he was a guest on my channel a while back um, to do some um, stories around it as well and include it in the game, which would be really cool as well. Uh, it'd be good to get Pappy in the game, um, and yeah, he's a good, he's a good guy. And uh, obviously, he's the he's written some Transformers comics in the past for um, yeah, and uh, for DW, and yeah, it'd be pretty good. So yeah, looking forward to it. Cool. Okay. Uh, what is next? Okay, next is my top 10 things I want to see come to Transformers Earth Wars. So, number 10 on the list is Headmasters. Headmasters. Number 10 on my list of Transformers Earth Wars things I want to see is Headmasters. I said this a while ago that I thought headmasters would come to the game. You know, we have seen some headmasters in the game. We've seen Brainstorm and uh, we've already got like Mind Wipe. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of bots out there that uh, are already headmasters. And it, I think they're quite easy to do and quite cool. Um, but I'm not too sure why the apes. Maybe it's because they're not really um, in the limelight in terms of toys. They have had, you know, headmaster toys come out from Hasbro. You know, we know that Hasbro control a lot of these things. Um, and you know, I think they've got license to do it, but for whatever reason, they've um, they've uh, decided not to yet. Uh, Skull Crunch is on there as well. You know, there's plenty of bots, and it just means that there's more bots to do as well. They, they've always said that they're, they're struggling to do cons, they're running out of cons, and I know you've got energy on and things like that. But we've got G1 bots there already. We've got G1 bots ready to go. There's at least another three or four headmasters they can choose from. They can even update the current ones, which would be pretty cool as well. Uh, and although a lot of people don't like sort of human characters and things like that, it's a bit different as headmasters. You know, we don't like seeing. I don't personally like the human elements of the films, the Bay Farmers. Um, and you know, I weren't a big fan of Daniel in the cartoons and things like that. But to the headmasters, it's the head that comes off. So it's a bit a bit cooler, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I would love to, head, to see headmasters coming to the game. Uh, Hardhead, one of my favourite um, favourite toys as a kid. So, uh, yeah, I, I'd love to see Headmasters in the game. I really would. But, you never know. You never know, but yeah. And next on my list of things I want to see in Transformers Earth Wars is... Optimus Maximus Buff. How long has this been going on for? It must. It's years. It must be three years. Easy. Maybe four years. Whenever came, Combiners came out, it was about a year after that that everyone started complaining, saying that he needs a buff. And man, this guy needs a buff. I mean, other Combiners are less relevant, but this guy is really, really awful. Really awful. It says a lot when he's level 7 for me. That says it all. Um, but yeah, Space Hit needs to address this sooner than later. You know, um, he's just totally fell from the wayside. Totally, totally fell away from being anywhere near any other combiner. And I know that you can say Victorian, Superion. I mean, Superion had a buff not too long ago. Um, I know you can say, like, Victorian maybe and other bots. Uh, but this guy's on his own. He's, like, down there somewhere. If we were doing that with Tex, the, you know, godly and great, uh, he would be, like, disastrous. Uh, right, right down there. So uh, I think he's well, well, well overdue. And uh, we really need to see this uh, this buff to Optimus Maximus now. I think it's been pushed, it's been shelved. And I'm hoping when they bring out five-star combiners, they address this as well and give some of the older combiners buff. And definitely Optimus Maximus. I'm pretty sure about a year ago, or two years ago, they were talking about doing it actually in the stream and discussing it. So, you know, they've got some more members in the team now. So there's no reason why, why they can't. Okay. And the next one on my list is Five Star Combiners. You know, we never thought this would be possible, really, until recently when China brought theirs out. We're like, whoa, 
maybe it could be. We asked in stream and they were like, oh, yeah, maybe eventually. Uh, this is obviously not an image of a five-star combiner. This is my sort of hashed-up version. Um, but, yeah, it'd be really cool to have five-star combiners. I just, I just hope that when they do the five-star combiners, um, they also uh, give them a five-star ability like Omega. Let's not just upgrade their HP and DPS. That's pretty boring, let's be honest. We want a five-star ability as well. Um, and that would be super, super cool, like I said. Um, a lot of people got maxed out combiners. A lot of mine are like level 19 now already. Um, we need that next step when HU18 comes out. And the eight said that we'll probably see five star combiners around, you know, when HQ18 is released. Um, but they also said that that'll be the next big thing, HQ18. So HQ18 is probably coming out in the next three or four months, guys. Honestly, I think it might even be that soon. Um, and, you know, hopefully we can get five star combiners around the same time. So they've got no plans yet. But I think they need to start. I do. It's one of the most requested things uh, on the stream and what, what I can see as well. So, um, yeah, really, really looking forward to. Um, uh five star combiners hopefully okay and number seven on my things i want to see coming to transformers earth wars is another research slot how many times does this get asked for how many times do we talk about it how many times do people say like credit the research slot Can I have a research slot what about the research slot can we research slot for three star bots can we have a three a research slot for level 50 and below bots Basically, we need another research slot. We've been asking them for this for years. And the apes go, yeah, maybe. And then the week after, they go, uh, yeah, maybe. And then six months later, they go, yeah, maybe. There's a reason they get asked for every single stream. It's because people need this research slot. Yes, we have the research skips and things like that. But people have backlogs of probably a year's worth. I think me and Grindtime spoke about this about, about a year ago when we sat there and worked out uh his alt accounts uh research that have all stacked together and it was honestly about nine months of research back to back you know doing two slots at a time you know we can't have people bots in nine months time that are still stuck at a certain level we need these extra research slots definitely 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 so yes number seven on my list is another research slot hey coin it you know bring it out and you gotta buy it whatever but just just bring it out guys just bring it out easy just bring it out okay number six on my list of things i want to see in transformers earth wars is brawn i've been asking for this guy loads uh you know a g1 character you know, not Energon or anything like that. There's loads of characters and go through Energon and whatever else. But, you know, G1 characters. You know, we've got Shattered Glass and all. Let's, let's go back to G1. Let's get some of the originals out. You know, and Braun was a massive, you know, figure in the original cartoon. He was in the first ever episode as well. If not the first, the second at least, part two, maybe the start. But you get what I mean. You know, those guys should all be in the, t all be in the game already. You know, and we, you know, what? eight years on seven years on and still not got brawn but he's out as a figure now uh the, his figure is in the stores so i'm hoping that we can get brawn hopefully this year uh he's been asked for quite a bit uh and a really cool um really cool bot as well so yeah hoping uh brawn uh comes to the game soon okay number five of my things i want to see in trap on earth wars you probably guessed this Maybe not number five, maybe higher for more, but it is the nose cone buff. Again, years it's been going on for. Years. Come on, what are we doing? And then earlier this year in January, they said, right, we're going to look at nose cone. And everyone was like, yay. And we've heard nothing since. It's not been in playtest and nothing. You know, what? what's... Stop. Why are they dragging the feet with this? Come on, let's just get it done. It's become a running joke because it's been probably the most requested thing behind research slots and behind a couple of other things over the years. I mean, talking like over like eight years. And this guy's only been out two years, I think it is. You know, it, like I said, it's become a running joke now that everyone sort of laughs about it about Nosecon being the worst bot in the game and needing a buff. And, you know, we see so many memes and jokes about it. It's unreal. Everyone knows this guy needs a fix. Everyone knows this guy needs some sort of buff. The, even the apes know it. And 
they still not done it and it needs sort of addressing sooner than later. I mean, come on. Um, but yeah, fix nose cone. Has, hashtag fix nose cone now. That should be the hashtag. Hashtag fix nose cone now. But yes, number uh, five on my list is the nose cone buff. Okay, a number four on my things I want to see in Transformers Earth Wars is multiple base designs. That's what I want to see. I want to be able to save multiple base designs and I want to be able to go, I want to use this base for war. No, well, now I want to use this base for war. And now I want to use this base for war. And I want to be able to choose. Because at the minute, so again, going back to that big controversy about whether we put someone in our commander slot um, who was cheating, which he was cheating, and we knew about it, we didn't. What we do is we rotate our commander so that the base is always different. So that when we face Forge in a war and they beat our commander and they drop some points and then they figure out how to beat it, we don't want to face them again a few days later and they all know how to beat that base and then it gives them advantage. So we keep swapping our commander every so often, every, I'd say every few days, every three or four days. But if you had multiple base designs, we wouldn't have to do that as much. We could design three designs and we can change in between. We wouldn't have to swap commanders around and things like that as much. Um... You know, and they said that, you know, the reason for it is, you know, uh, lack of memory and things like that. But that'd be pretty cool. You know, and like I said, we only need, you know, three designs maybe. We don't need hundreds of them. But, you know, it'd be good. Um, and, yeah, like Rescue's put in the chat, we're asking for two years or more. Yeah, definitely. I'd say five years or more. Uh, again, there's a lot of these things that I've been asked for and asked for and asked for and asked for. Um but yeah, I think we need it in the game. Base design is coming harder and harder. Uh, the more things they add, the more time consuming it is. So it's getting to a point in the game where it's no longer a nice to have. It's more getting towards being essential. I mean, you could just make it a HQ 17 thing. Because or even HQ 60. You know, before that, base design is not as tedious. Uh, but once you get to the top levels of the game, you've got to really put some thought into it. You want to keep rotating those bases around, like I said, for war purposes. Because you're warring at the top levels. Uh, and you face these other teams quite often as well in Prime League. So um, we definitely need this uh, in the game, these multiple base designs. And uh, yeah, that is my number four. And then into the top three things I want to see in the game. So you're thinking, God, we've got multiple base designs. That's gone already. Five star combiners and nose cone. Before. What could possibly be left? And number three for me, personally, on things I want to see is Beachcomber. One of my all-time favourite Transformers. Again, had this toy as a kid. So you can see I've included Braun. I had as a kid, I've included Beachcomber, Headmasters. These all go back to a bit of nostalgia, really. So although it's not 100% nostalgia, you know, these are the things that sort of get you intrigued in these bots and want these bots and want to collect them. And uh, I really want this guy coming to the game. He's a great guy. He was involved in the Golden Lagoon thing as well. So I'm not sure if they can choose that angle on it. But I absolutely love this guy. Um, but basically, it just means I want to see more G1 characters. Definitely more G1 characters. Those are the characters we grew up really loving uh, for people in my generation. I want to see more of these in the game. Shattered Glass. Meh, it's just a bot. Let's be honest with me. It's just a bot. I've not got no attachment to Shattered Glass. Uh, Beast Wars, I've got no attachment. I know some people have. But me personally... It's all about the G1 for me. All about G1. And I've always said that. that I'm a massive G1 fan. Um, and yeah, I'd love to see Beachcomber in the game. Yeah, really, really cool. Uh, and hoping he comes this year. I really do. Uh, I think his toy came out last year, I think it was. So, uh, you know, there's good reason to bring him to the game. There really is. Cool. Okay. So you're thinking, was what could possibly be next? What's left? Big ones. Big ones are next. And number two of my things I want to see in Earth Wars is new event structures. We've been rinsing and repeating the same old events for years. You've got leaderboards, chance events, totalizers. And yes, you can say, oh, well, yeah, but you've got totalizers for this and totalizers for that. And to but let's be honest, you've got individual totalizers. Alliance totalizers. So let's just put them under totalizers. So you've got totalizers. Then you've got um, individual prestige and alliance prestige. You've got prestige events. So you've got totalizers. You've got prestige events. Chance events come under prestige events. So you've got totalizers, prestige events, 
leaderboards. That's it. Same three structures throughout. We had raids for a while. It didn't really work. We need a new event structure. We need something fresh into the events. They're getting boring, guys. They really are. Same events for eight years. And this is why I think people are getting a bit bored of these events. And I suggested something, and they said it wasn't possible. But I would love to see it in the game. I want to stress it again. It's a team v team event where you register for the event and you get put with random people. And you all work together to do whatever, to battle other teams or to complete events or whatever. But the idea is that you meet new people, you make new connections and things like that. People you would never meet normally. You know, there's people in Platinum and Gold League that unless I see them in my stream or talk to them in Cybertron, you know, if they're not in Discord, I'll never meet them. I'll never talk to them in a million years. But, you know, if they brought out somewhere where you did a, you know, if they brought out um, where you register for the event and get put with random people, you're making connections with people. You know, connect it. I, I like that idea that it's something new. And, you know, I go back to TFL when they did the Team V Team events. It was so cool, guys. Honestly, so cool. And you would meet loads of new people. And uh, it was really good. And you keep in contact with them. And sometimes they join an alliance. And then sometimes you go and help them out. You know, sometimes you complete an event. And you're like, you know what? I'll go and help them guys that I met last last Team V Team event. And you hit them up and go, hey, have you got any space? Do you want some help? Yeah, thanks. Well, yeah, I could do come and, you know, some help. And, you know, just making them connections in game and bringing the community together. Um, but, but whatever they choose, we need some new event structures. Definitely. Um, yeah. I don't know. Just read the sort of uh, some suggestions for events. Uh, Alf Transport, get rid of leaderboard events. Well, that's the big money maker, isn't it? Let's be honest. That's the big one for the top guys. Uh, but we still need something else. And Rescue's put, uh, if their events had gotten, hadn't gotten so long, you'd be out murking and meeting some other people. Um, yeah, but we're more war focused, so we don't go murk. A lot of us, we just stay in war. To be honest with you, we don't bother. But it's because, as well, we don't need the XP anymore. You know, we're all maxed out. We don't really need much XP. So, you know, we don't need to do it. We might as well war and relax rather than go and get an XP that we don't need. You know, unless you want to particularly help someone, then yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the problem with events as well. That's the problem with the game as it is at the top level of needing something else. So looking forward to HQ18 and the cap raising. That would be pretty cool. Um, SG Soundways put maybe community events once in a while. Where everyone has to work together to get rewards. Yeah, but they tried that, but that community events didn't work. But that's because what they did was they set the bar really, really low. They sort of said, right, okay, so how much spark does the general community use within a week? All oh, right, 200 million spark. Right, okay. Well, let's say that if they use 200 million spark to get these rewards. So then obviously everyone goes mental using spark, so they've got to go over that 200 million anyway. And then you get the rewards. You pretty much guaranteed the rewards. So there's no like pulling together really. Everyone just and then what happens is they announce this event two weeks in advance, and everyone just doesn't spend Spark for two weeks and just spends it in that one week. So nothing changes really. And they say it's a community event, but there's no community in it. We don't come together and do something as a community. We just all spend our resources on the same week. It's pretty poor really as a community event. So yeah. Um what else? Uh, Bricks Motion's put, I offered an event where in order to get point, must complete quests. Um, yeah, maybe. I want something to bring the community together, though, personally. I'd like to see that. Um, but yeah. Uh, Chris Harmon's put, I have different event wards and stuff. Yeah, but it's still the same totalizers and prestiges. Up in it. You could you could dress it up as whatever. You could make it a five-star event. You could make it a guaranteed four-star event. You could make it a chance event. You could make it a five-star event. Uh, you could make it a uh prime core event or a g metal event you can make dress it up as anything you want but it's still prestige totalizer leaderboard and then raid events which they've got rid of let's be honest so yeah uh super scott's put more campaigns but yeah the campaigns are done pretty quickly and from what i've heard it's a lot of time investment to create campaigns and so they're not really fans of doing it unless they have a big release um so yeah i don't think we'll see campaigns but they definitely need to do something definitely and number one on my list of things I want to see in Transformers Earth Wars, and if you know me well, you'll know what this is, and that is a war rework of some kind. You can see I just sort of like hashed a, 
a sort of thing. Um, so Grind Sanity channel sort of talked about having multiple paths that you can choose and things like that. And um, loads of ideas have gone in. And they said they're going to do this war rework has been coming. They said it would come after after Titans last September. Just want to emphasise that. Last September. They said that's the next uh, project. It's now April. And they're trying their best by buffing Prime League effects and making hard mode harder. And it's causing a bit of a divide. But ultimately, it needs a freshen up. Like events, we need something fresh. We need something different. We've had the same structure now for eight years. The same war structure. The same events. It's pretty much the same rewards. Shards. Cores. Spark. It's the same. And I think that's why we're losing a lot of players in the game, really. A lot of top players. is because it's just the same thing week in, week out. And we need something fresh. Yeah, we've got Titans and things that have been added to the game. And Zen farming. and But we need to... It's not midweek. We've got loads of things midweek coming to the game. Loads of good things. Um, But we haven't had anything in terms of events. We haven't had anything in terms of wars, really. We've had hard mode and prime league. But that's still a couple of years a year ago 18 months ago and you know it's getting a bit stale now we really need to invest in events bring some new events out some new ideas and they really need to invest uh in wars and change the way wars work and make them more competitive and not as linear again i've, I've said this to i'm blue in the face i'm all for choice all for choice war is fight these five bases you beat them you all beat them you win. That's it. There's not much choice there, is there? There's a bit of choice on how you attack it, but that's it. You know, let's create some choice. Like, can I attack this base or this base? Can I go this way? Can I do this instead? And whatever else. But uh, we really need to look at it um, and have some sort of rework to wars. And that's for me the massive priority. Because we're in a war focused alliance, is what I really look forward to every day. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do, open up the game, look in the charts. Who have we got for war today? Who have we got? Oh, right. No one. Oh, okay, then. That's it. So when we get a top war, I'm like, yes, top war. Well, at least I was. But then recently, I'm like, oh, top war. Okay, yeah, do my tax. Yeah. Because I'll come a bit too easy. All a bit too similar. All a bit too same. But I do look forward to these wars. But I want to be more challenging. I want it to be a bit more just different. Just simply different. We need some difference in that in wars. We really do. And, um,. Yeah, I'm hoping they can do that. Uh, they said they're going to be a rework out soon. That'll be the next thing before HQ18. And I hope it is a rework. I hope it's not just a quick fix and something slightly different. It needs to be totally different and imaginative. It really does. And I'm hoping if I took some ideas from people. Um, but yeah, uh, SG Sandwich put maybe for war you have to fight half the alliance bases. I don't think... The problem is with the hour cooldown, you're free to play. Um, if you start adding loads and loads and loads of battles, um, then it becomes very, very time-consuming. But if we stick to the normal five battles, but make it so that you have a choice of attacking everyone in the alliance. So base one could be one of five. Base two, one of five bases. Base three. So you can sort of think like, oh, well, I'm going to attack that base, and that base is a bit easier than maybe that base, and then come down here for that base, and then attack that base up there. And then you can sort of judge, and then as a lion, you can go, oh, they're picking out the easy bases. Or you can say, oh, they're um, picking out their bases for this reason, because it's got a fundamental problem with it. How are they attacking it? Why are they choosing that base? And then those people can change their base designs, hopefully. Um, but yeah. Of transport, you can always handicap yourself. Yeah, but why would you why would you i've, always, I've had this out before so if i use my teams i get 300 and that gives my my team my alliance 300 points guaranteed the way i sort of attack so why why would i make it harder for myself and chance not to score 300 points to then make my fellow alliance members lose rewards it just doesn't make any sense. I could go with no combined for every war, but I probably won't 300 everyone. I, well, I don't think I would. I think I'd lose a couple. But then I chance my alliance doing that. And, you know, it's all about winning. You know, it's like saying, uh, oh, um, I play football and we win the league every year. Oh, right, well, why don't you play football with an arm tied behind your back? Well, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's not a solution, is it? Let's be honest. You know, we, don't, we shouldn't have to make the game harder for ourselves. It should be challenging anyway. So...
but yeah, like I said, don't want to talk about that too much, like I said. But um, yeah, those are my top 10 things I want to see coming to Transformers Earth Wars. So, Headmasters, Autos Maximus, uh, a fix or a buff, five star combiners, another research slot, brawn, a nose cone buff, uh, multiple base designs we have to choose from, uh, beach coma, and other G1 bots, uh, a new event structure, completely different from what we've got, and de and the top of the list is a war rework. And that's it. Cool. Okay. And uh, next up. So, next up. So, the apes have said that uh, what they're going to probably be doing for the next uh, five-star batch is they're going to include, obviously, um, Flatline and Minerva and uh, SG uh, Thundercracker and Jetfire. Uh, so, they'll be in the next batches. But the, the change they're going to make, they said, is that they probably won't do it as five bots. They're probably going to make it seven. Good or bad? What do you guys think? And you might think, yeah, it's really good. But then, so, if they make it a seven in a batch, say I wanted... Minerva. I wanted Minerva. Instead of 1 in 5 chance, I've now got 1 in 7 chance. That's a problem. So, you'll have the two leadable bots in there, and then five other bots. And yeah, that was my sort of thinking straight away. I see people in chat saying, but then you've got less chance of it, and things like that. Yeah, that's the point I was making. You know? I was, uh, I was... Uh, making my five, my list originally before this uh, in my head, and I thought, right, well, we've got um, Minerva and Flatline, we've got SG Thundercracker and Jetfire, we've got a community choice. There's only two other ones. That should be pretty easy to predict, really. But then they said it's going to be seven now. So I'm a bit. But then you have increased five star shards, and I said in my previous stream that when they increase five star shards, don't get too giddy. Because we know what happens. They increase 5 star shards. And it's all about supply and demand. So if they increase the supply of something. They've got to increase the demand. And I think this is their way of balancing it out. Increasing the supply of 5 star shards. But making more 5 stars available. So yes. So before where you might get 1 5 star or 2 out of a batch. You might get 3 or 4 now. Because 5 star shards are more accessible. But it's now instead of 2 out of 5. You'll probably get 4 out of 7. So... I kind of get it, and I get that they don't want to limit it to just two leaderboard bots, one community choice, and just two bots. They need to get some combiner bots out. They want to make these five-star combiners. But seven bots in a batch. Uh, I don't know. I'm a bit on the fence. Risk use pot. Yeah, as bad as it is, it takes a year to clear a batch. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other things. SG Soundwares put, uh, if SA make the other three bots trash, no one wants to go for it, especially if it's not a buying apart. I think we'll see more buying apart. Again, I've done my predictions, going to go through them soon. Um, but, you know, it's all about, it's all about the playtesters now. You know, if they get the other three bots really, really good, and they should be, up to the likes of Minerva and those sort of scales, um, then yeah, but then sometimes I feel for the playtesters, because I've been in there in that situation. And sometimes you can push and push and push, and the apes are just like, Nope. And it's frustrating that the playtesters, again, are our player base and they should be able to be uh, trusted on where a bot should be. And the apes go like, no, sorry. And I've seen it time and time again with Double Dealer, for example, with uh, Lightspeed, um, that those bots were being pushed and pushed and the apes were just like, nope. And they, they're pretty much two of the most awful bots in the game. So, yeah. Uh, Listen, Pulse has put batches to come more often. I agree with that, actually. That's a good point. I would rather have five in a batch and come more often. Like, every three months, say. Um, or every four months. Uh, you know, at the minute, we're seeing once every uh, nine months. You know? Um, but, um, you know, that's a good point, actually, Listen, Pulse. That's a good, uh, a good medium of having the batches come out more often. But like anything... Listen, they said Ability 11's coming out. Every two months, you'll have Ability 11. We haven't had one for months, basically. Um, so, they have these good intentions, and they might put this in place. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. Um, so, 
you know, they said war effects will change every single saga. Uh, from what I've seen in playtest, these new effects are not tested fully yet. Not at all. And so next saga, they won't be ready because they promised they would. And they, sadly, they just things fall behind. They can't keep to their promises of timescales. They just can't. I don't want to criticize too much, but in terms of timescales, they are literally really, really awful. Really, really awful. Um, and yeah, you know, so I, don't, I wouldn't want to put anything like that, a timescale thing on it where we've, they've got to try and keep to it and they don't. So, yeah. Uh, Grand Times put, they just need to save the leaderboard five stars. So there's five of them and add them as one occasional five star batch. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, risky sport is not to the playtester because they do ultimately do whatever they want. Yeah, but the playtesters do have a big say uh, in a lot of things, but um, not always, as we know. Um, SG Soundways put something SA need to do is focus on buffing bots. I don't even use like dust up. Uh, I've given up on that. I tried and tried and tried. Um, I know risky was in uh, playtest, um, and they. I'm not sure they were in there when I. Did my power glide escapade trying to get power glide improved, uh, but it fell on deaf ears sadly, and uh, I, I've just sort of given up really. We'll never see uh, old bots really buff that much. You're talking one per year maybe, like I said. But yeah. My poll is put. I think there should be a leaderboard batch. Yeah, but a leaderboard batch would come every. There's only a leaderboard every three months, is it, I think, usually. I know we've been two back-to-back. -back. This is because they missed it in November, I think it was. Uh, so there's only four per year, so you're waiting 15 months for a five-star batch of leaderboard bots. Unless they include something else in it. I, I don't know, but... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm on the fence with it. I'm on the fence. But, that being said, what is my uh, predictions... For the next five star batch. So I know Grind Time's in the chat, so don't be stealing my ideas, Grind Time, okay? Um, he always does this, he steals my ideas, always. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> obviously, uh, first off is going to be uh, Minerva and Flatline and SG Jetfire and Thundercracker. I think they will be in the batch. I think we'll have a batch of seven. They said maybe eight, uh, but definitely going to be uh, seven. So, they will be in the batch, and who else do I think will be in the batch? Hmm. Let me know who you think will be in the batch, guys. Any bots you think will be in there? I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Ooh. Excuse me. Whew. So, my first choice is who will be in the batch. This is not who I want in the batch. This is who I think will be in the batch. There's a difference. I don't want this guy in the batch, but I think he'll be there. And for obvious reasons when I uh, point it out. And I think for the next batch, it will be Slug and Rampage. I think we'll get um, we'll get Volcanicus complete. Uh, Rampage completes um, Predator King. Uh, we might even see these guys as the first uh, five-star combiner. So... I think we'll see Slug and Rampage. I think we'll see a rework to their abilities completely uh, to pull them apart from Pyra Magna. Everyone's saying they're far too similar. So I think we'll totally rework their ability personally uh, as part of the five-star batch. It'd be a good time to do it as well. So, uh, yeah, my first or third choice even, if you include, uh, you know, Minerva and SG Jetfire and Flatline and Thundercracker, is uh, Slug and Rampage. Next on the list of five-star predictions, in my opinion, is going to be... Who's it going to be? 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 It's going to be Streetwise and Cinnatwim. Um, and yes, so we're ever closer to Defensor and to um, Abominus. But then the big one then is, if we get uh, Streetwise and Sinner Twin, it means we need a 5-star tracks and 5-star Cutthroat. And I think what will happen is, in this batch, we'll have uh, Streetwise and Sinner Twin. And then in the next batch, which will be HQ18, or there or thereabouts, I think then we will see tracks for HQ18. Tracks and uh, Cutthroat. 
to complete the combiners. And uh, yeah, that's my uh, next prediction. Uh, my next prediction on who will be in the next batch might surprise some people. Unpopular opinion. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? It's going to be... Nose Cone. And this, I think, is the reason why we haven't seen it yet. Why they talked about it, but why it's not been done yet. I think the waiting to bring it out in a five-star batch is a combiner part. It means they can give him a buff at the same time. And we'll see a five-star nose coat in the game. Not as he is now as a total rework. So a five-star nose cone and a five-star drill horn. So yeah, I think we will uh, we will see them have a rework as part of the five-star batch, personally. Be cool to see what they do with it. Um, Dale's already said that it's looking pretty cool what they've thought about. So we'll uh, have to wait and see. And my next choice... My next choice, and I'm hoping this will be the community event. Uh, or the community choice, should say. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? I think it's going to be Hound. Well, well, well overdue. And this guy is amazing as a five star. Uh, you know, we try and, you know, switch it up by having warriors and trying having special bots and, you know, uh, nose corns a warrior as well. So I think as the gunner in the batch, we'll uh, probably see Hound. And will be a really good addition. Doesn't need much work going through it to it. If they're doing loads of work on the likes of um, nose cone and slug, then I don't think it needs to do much. Um, Rework on on Hound. I think he's good as he is. It's an upgrade, and uh, that'll be uh, really really cool. Yeah. Uh, my last choice. I was torn between two or three bots. I couldn't really decide, and even right now, I, I couldn't really decide. And the three bots I was thinking of is, will we see Dinobot? That means three warriors in the batch. I can see it, but I think they'll save Dinobot for when Beast Wars comes back out again. I think they'll save Dinobot for next year. We know that the uh, new Transformers film is coming out next year. I think we'll see a lot more five-star Dinobots, uh, or five-star Beast Wars bots uh, then. So I think we'll see Dinobot eventually, but not yet. I don't think we'll see Dinobot yet. And then I know that Tex has been begging and begging and begging for a five-star Aerie. I know he has. Um, but... I don't know. As a combiner part, we might see him. Are they going to focus on Superior as well? There's a lot of combiner parts in this batch. So is it going to be air raid? And then the last bot I thought of is Double Dealer. Double Dealer rated one of the worst bots in the game. Um, really needs a rework. But I think they'll stick with combiner bots. And my last choice is air raid. Air raid and slipstream. I really do think we'll start seeing more and more and more combiner parts. Uh, and we'll start seeing more of Superion in there. So even the likes of Power Glide, he may get a rework. Um, but yeah, more and more combiner bots. So that is my predictions for the next five star batch. And that is Minerva and Flatline. It's a uh, SG Jetfire and SG Thundercracker. It's a uh, Slug and Rampage. Streetwise and Sinner Twin. Nose Cone and Drill Horn. Hound and Drag Strip. An air raid and slipstream. So let me know in the chat if you agree. Anything you agree with. Anyone else you'd like to see. You think you'll see. I mean. Is it time for 5 star star saber? I don't think it. I think it is. But I don't think the apes think it is. I still don't think. I think they're going to really focus on combiner parts. I really do. To get these 5 star combiners out. I really really do. They say there's no plans yet. Next 5 star batch is going to come out. You know. In the next two months. So maybe I'm way off. Maybe we won't see any combiner parts. But I think that, you know, the fact that Yanis said this in the last five star batch when we saw the likes of Headstrong, we're like, why are we chosen Headstrong and Pipes? Well, everyone was saying Pipes more, to be honest. And it's like, just look, look at the Decepticons, look at who we've chosen. It'll all make sense. It was all combiner parts. It did make sense. So, if they're not considering five-star combiners, then why are they considering combiner parts in the previous batch? Doesn't make sense to me. Bit of a smoke and cloak and daggers thing. So I think we'll see more uh, more combiner parts. I really do. Uh, Jason Rollins put too soon for Minerva, um, but no, they said they will. They've said in the stream 
the the latest two um latest two uh, leaderboard five stars will be in that batch. They said. Um, so yeah, I'm just going off what they've said, but that's what I think. Uh, they said it could be eight bots, but um, yeah, definitely seven. Uh, SG Soundwave has put, did I hear a stash crystal giveaway? Uh, kind of. You'll see at the end. You'll see at the end. And that is my five star predictions. Bricks Motions put streetwise tracks. SG Jetfire, Minerva, Skydive, hmm, interesting. A uh, Door Dealer and Hound. Skydive is an interesting one. It really is. I wouldn't want a five star Skydive though, I don't think. It's damage over time. But then people are using less and less heal build bots. But then people are using a lot more um, self repair cores. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Risk just put Air Raid or Slipstream. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think it'd be pretty decent. I think it's five stars. I do. Very similar to Brainstorm, but without the more of explosion, but less speed down. But yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people use a four star. Thanks. I think it's down to text really, sort of pushing it and saying how good he is. So it'd be interesting. Yeah. Um, Victory Star Saber says Star Saber will probably be after this batch since we have no Haslab. Since we have Haslab Star Saber. Ooh, yeah, well that's, well, that's an interesting topic, actually, because I mentioned um, a few weeks ago um, uh, in my interview with Dale, uh, I asked, uh, will we see Unicron come into the game? And his reaction was, oh, as if we can get Unicron in the game. He's far too big. I was like, hmm, bit of sarcasm there, Dale. And they did it again in stream today. This, the, he asked the uh, question about Unicron. And there was a sudden silence. They were very coy. And I always do think we'll see Unicron in the game because of, I think it was Haslab, was it? That brought out Unicron. Uh, I really do think we'll see Unicron in the game somehow. I, I don't know how. God forbid. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting. Yeah, how they're going to put it in the game that big. But yeah. Uh, Christian Cruz has put maybe a five star cup. Maybe. Maybe. That's a one I considered as well. There's a few bots I considered. Um, but that's what I chose in the end, mostly on combiner parts, mostly. Um, so yeah, you can see there that there's four combiner parts in there. Community choice, I think everyone will go for Hound, I think it's one of the best bots around as a four star. Be crazy good as a five star. Uh, and the last two leaderboard bots, so it wouldn't be too bad a, bot, a batch if they've uh, buffed them, right? So yeah. Victory Star Saber, but maybe you're inside Unicorn. Well, the idea I saw, here's the sort of... Um, my sort of uh, take on this. So, um, the new programmer was the number one player on Clash of Clans for about six months. The number one player, not like one of the top players, the number one player for six months. He holds that record. Uh, it's been a space here for quite a while now, and he's come over um, to uh, Transformers Earthwall to help develop some new things, whatever, to help Fabian out. So, playing uh, Clash of Clans, uh, myself, uh, what they did about two years ago, maybe three years ago, is they brought out a second base that you have to build, but was different. So, a bit like building a Cybertron base. So, would they have it where Decepticons have to build a base on Unicron? Or Autobots have to build a base on uh, Primus in some way? And all defences act different. So, you have your normal base that you all battling will they go towards wars where unicron is in the game and where the sixth base is like a kind of raid base or unicron in some way and you have to beat it somehow um be interesting what to do with that i hope it's not a raid base that'll really put me off wars and might even kill it for me um but be interesting to see how unicron comes in the game for sure yeah uh chris harman's put i think we need air class viper uh sky warp or sky warp uh night raven um yeah well um yeah we put air raid and slipstream in there so we have got some air class in there we've got air we've got air class we've got um uh, one gunner we've got a special bot and two warriors and then a healer and another air class we've got two air class so with the sg jetfire and thundercracker so yeah maybe maybe um Victory, well, that's an interesting point as well. So things keep coming up in the chat. Um, Victory Star Saber's put, uh, do you guys think the Ace will do anything special for the anniversary? So 
they were keeping very very quiet and I made a, a joke and I said that uh, will we see a six star for six years no we're not gonna see that guy I thought it was a joke uh, will we see a five star again I don't see why not you know um, I don't see why we can't have a legacy five star again and that caused a bit of confusion when I said that in one of the charts I said a legacy which legacy what I mean by a legacy five star is you have you will get a five star like the last one, you have no choice. You'll just get a random five star. And I hope we do it every year. I mean, giving one five star away every year is not the end of the world. And let's be honest, if you do get it, you've got to spend to level it up to a decent level. So I think that, you know, every anniversary giving a five star bot, four star bots have fell away now. You know, they're not the thing they was. The prize is not the thing they was. For a four star non dupe anything to me is a dupe. That's pretty much it. Or a non dupe is a bot that I'm not going to level. It's going to be Punch or Hound Vamp, Brainstorm. I'm not going to level any of them as four stars, really. Um, so, you know, for me, you know, a five star uh, event will be pretty good. Matt Paul has put a five star combat for the anniversary. Yeah, maybe. I think they're more inclined to give five star bots because they rate combats more highly because combats are newer so newer content so they're more obliged to give older content away uh but yeah a bit interesting to see i hope we do give a, a five star away again yeah but yeah hopefully they do something like that again i think we're past four stars now aren't we really uh, we don't see any more four star events anymore because people are like mm -hmm. i've got most of four stars now most people have really the most decent players anyway so um yeah uh, Ginger's put, I would love to see a 5 star this anniversary, I don't think we have a chance of getting it. No, you will. The last um, the last event where they did a 5 star, I think they made it where you had to get like 200,000 points or something. It worked at like 5,000 points per player. Maybe even less. It might have been 100,000 points. They made a point of making it so it was accessible to everyone. It was a celebration where it was, you know, as long as you put up some points. I think that I put up about three to 5,000 points on Jake's account. And, um, yeah, to get the five star. And, uh, yeah, got it. And that's a HQ 14. So, it's, you know, accessible when they do if they do it. I mean, again, I'm just guessing, guys. I'm just sort of, like, you know, throwing things around. But uh, I don't see why we can't do a five star. We did a five star for five years. But we've set a new thing now. You know, five stars are in leaderboards now. And we're seeing more shards. So, you know, why not? I think we're pretty cool. Uh, well, there you go. SG Soundwave's put is around 150,000 points. For an alliance, so yeah. So yeah. Yeah, Matt Poli there has put on free to play and only need about 15 four stars. Most of them combine the pieces. Yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, you know. Um, yeah, I think it's time. I think it's time. I really do. To keep, I mean, you know, five stars, progress a bit, have five stars in the event anniversary event. Pretty cool. I think it'd be a cool thing to do. I really do. We get everyone pumped. Uh, more bots to level, and hopefully I get someone decent this time. I mean, last time I got Snarl. Um, to give you an idea, so the last anniversary event was last May, I think it was. Um, and so since then, I've got Snarl to 53. And to be honest with you, the only reason he's got level 8 is because I keep maxing out on Spark. That's the only reason. Um, who did I put Spark into earlier? I mean, I don't use Skyburst. I've took her to 9 because I've got too much. I don't use Prowl. I took him to 9. I don't use Red Alert. I took him to 10. You know. Uh, Sam, Sandstone not using Wars at all. 10. Uh, you know. All these bots that I've sort of maxed out. I'll give Jetfire 11. Not really because I want to give it him. Just because I want to use that Spark. All this Spark that I've sort of used. I even took a uh, Cup to 10. I thought I might as well. Because when the cap raises I'll probably use him to power up to Golden Lagoon. So I'm not going to go to Waste. And I might even take him to 11 eventually. But um, I still got the, the upgrades. I'm, I'm going to save them for... Uh, HQ18, but yeah, we've got 3.1. I've just spent 500, uh, 750,000 uh, Spark on Cup, and I still got 3.1 million to give you an idea. So, overloading with Spark. So, yeah. Paul Taylor's put he created a second account for the last anniversary event. Yeah, I started playing Jake's event just to get in the five star. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah, and Matt Poe has got a good point there. He said, yeah, to be fair, the last anniversary event actually did see the community come together to help everyone out. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, I agree. You know what? It was really good. And that's why I like these Team B Teams events that I've talked about. That's why I want to see this sort of thing. I want to see things in the game that 
you know, uh, bring the community together like that. You know, we all sort of help each other out. It'd be pretty cool. Oh, Bix Motion said he missed the last anniversary. What? I was taking a break and wasn't paying attention to the news. Oh, man, that's so bad. Oh, unlucky. I feel for you. But yeah, listen, watch my streams and you'll, uh, you know, tune in every week and you'll know the news regardless, won't you? <laughs> um, Ginger's put, I still have a list of handy of all the lines they got there. Yeah, cool. 120 bottle lines and nearly 50 cons got it. That's cool. That's good to know. It is good. Yeah, I think it was really, really good. Uh, yeah, I very rarely... I, my time is very special over the weekend. So, I work over the weekend. Jacob plays football. Two games play for two different teams. Uh, over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday morning. So, my weekends are always hectic as it is. And then Sunday's my family day, really. So, my time's limited over the weekend. Um, and even that event, I was like, I'm going to go and help out and on the Sunday and go and help people out to get the five stars. You know, I enjoy helping people. That's why I set this stream up and why I started doing what I do. And, uh, you know, it's good to help people. I mean, obviously your time is precious with your family and things like that as well. But it's always good to help people out as well. So if we can help people out by, you know, don't get me wrong, if I've got to go to Alliance and do another 20k or 10k in a day, that's not really going to happen really. I'm not going to spend my whole day helping another Alliance out and put my family to one side. Uh, but, you know, if it just means doing an extra 3 or 4k to help someone get the 5 star, then yeah, I'm all for it. And everyone was jumping around everywhere and everything. It was really cool. It really was. Cool. So what am I doing this weekend? What's my plan for the leaderboard? So we're definitely going to get this little lady up. Uh, she's at 61, so I want to try and get her to 63, maybe. Uh, hoping she gets ability 11. You never know. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to get her to uh, 63. I don't think any golden lagoons are needed. Uh, I think I'm going to just do a bit of a clear with a bot. Uh, maybe red alert. I maybe use red alert and get him to 60 and clear a section. Maybe use prowl even get to 63 to clear a section and then hopefully slash some bases. I want to sort of practice in uh, zone 15 really. See if I can slash some bases in zone 15. Um, I think I'll try and do it without coins first um, and see or just coin and slash even and see how far I get and if it's successful then I'll start uh, I'll start doing that. Um, but yeah I don't need to go on Lagoon on slash. All you need is a uh, Megatronus corn go for that definitely zone 14 i ought to do that already with two bots um midweek just clear a section out with one bot and then drop slash so um pretty successful as well uh without megatronus so uh yeah probably get her up this weekend uh and then as a side project uh we'll probably get this guy up uh loving this guy at the minute wrote a storm so probably get him up a few levels maybe like little 55 56 something just a little side project uh but yeah lot like Sensius and I showed that team uh, that uh, sort of spam team so I'm hoping that might be uh, you know uh, a decent team for HUAT maybe or something uh, but yeah really loving using this guy with the likes of Sensius and bots like that uh, even using with Star Saber maybe even with, with Goldfire so sort of doing some damage with Goldfire using Rotorstorm uh, to clear out those uh, defenses and then the Crown Zeke's jump you can use Rotorstorm again uh, and I'm hoping maybe uh, I did a video a couple of years ago about cleanup crew and I'm hoping that can sort of make a bit of a comeback uh, maybe with a five star hound as well so using certain bots so a bit of a difference so before I use gold fire like four times to do a lot of damage and then um, use no use gold fire three times I think it was star saver ones elite ones but now I'm thinking use uh, gold fire maybe twice using hound once uh, and try and use some cheap bots where if it's a five star with a long range maybe even sea spray depending on the base uh, and then basically just doing a lot of one abilities everywhere with a team and then finishing off with rotor storm that's the idea maybe uh, but yeah we'll have to wait and see how it goes a little side project like I said and um, yeah it'd be, uh, be cool to try out it really will Uh, Chris Port Chris Harman's put was 100k for the five star. So yeah, we'll close that. Uh, Chris Harman's put, hey Grand Town, last was a stash crystal I got was 6,000 premium shards. I got a four star mega dupe out of it. Yeah, uh, a couple of people got four star dupes out of my stash crystal recently. Um, that was the second person in about the last three months. So I think the third person ever that I know of that's actually come and told me. Uh, I remember Sharks here. Um, 
actually uh, getting a four-star Jeep and getting a G Metal Core as well. It's like, well, the chance of that is like one in a million. You know, if winning a Sunstreaker was a Stash winning a Sunstreaker was a Stash Crystal, and then getting Prems out of it, and then putting a four-star in that, and then getting a G Metal Core out of the Jeep. You know, absolutely crazy. So, yeah, uh, you never, never know. But, yeah, you've got to be in it to win it. And that being said, we're going to do our giveaway while we're setting up for the uh, gift card giveaway. So, first three people to put in the chat, what were my seven five-star predictions? Was you paying attention? So, bot or con, doesn't matter. First three people to put what were my seven predictions and get it correct. The first three people will win a Sunstreak was a Sash Crystal. Easy. If you're paying attention. Okay. We'll give people a minute to get their answers in. Um, but yeah, like I said, so our platinum members that sort of support my channel uh, as a way to say a thank you. Uh, we do a gift card giveaway every other month. Um, and April is the month for giving one away. So, and like I said, I, when I first started this off, I started with a $30 gift card. I think I had about five or six members. And uh, I think I got five members. And I said, once we get more members, I'll up it. So, I've decided today that I've counted up and we've got seven members. So, once we get to ten members, uh, ten platinum members... Then I will up the gift card to fifty dollars. So if you are already a basic member and you want to be with a chance of a fifty dollar gift card on the next giveaway, maybe um, you know if you're a gold member or not a member at all, then consider becoming a member to support my channel. And then uh, if you do and I get ten members, uh, then yeah, I will um, I will up it to fifty dollars. So yeah. So. There's a few people that are putting six bots. Don't forget, guys, there is seven bots. There were seven bots in the batch. Seven. So, Grind Times put six. SG Sandwich put five. You need all seven. Bix Motions put four. Don't forget, there was seven bots, guys. First three people to get all seven winners. Sunstreaker was a stash crystal. What else are we doing? Not much, honestly. Like I said, so uh, we're currently in a war against Scorch Earth 2. Uh, losing. Uh, we could do a bit of a war attack while we're here, actually. Uh, let's have a look at Sanya's base while we're waiting for people to uh, give answers. So it's a split design, so we've got to take out the bottom section first. So um, not many defenses at the bottom, but um, they're all... No, there's two target protocol, three target protocol. They can be a bit nasty. Um, Death Pulse in the middle. Depends what combiners are in the middle. The, the bottom one's here. Um, but we, uh, we normally take... Um, um, Laser Optimus with us in case we come up against uh, Felbat. So, uh, yeah, be interesting to see. Uh, have we got any winners yet? Let's have a look. So, there wasn't any earlier, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, Matt Polick, congratulations. You got all seven right. You win a Sunstrike Water Stash Crystal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ginge 2000. You are correct. You win a Sunstick was a stash crystal. SG Samuels still only put five. <laughs> Chris Harmons only put five. There were seven guys. There was seven, don't forget. Um, MD Prime's got one wrong. Uh, who else? I'm trying to see who the first three was. So definitely Matt Poli. Um... Definitely Ginge 2000. Who else? Uh, just make sure. And Bricks Motion. I know it's put a Decepticon 1 and 7 out, but we'll give him that. So, yeah, congratulations, Bricks Motion. 
So, Bricks Motion, uh, Ginge 2000, and Matt Poli. Congratulations. Uh, and thank you, Chris Lewis, for being a member and also uh, from earlier. I did sort of uh, uh, mention it earlier, but uh, SG Soundwave for being members as well. Big shout out to you guys. Massive appreciation. Uh, and yeah, I appreciate the. Uh, the kudos about the great content, but, but thanks, Chris Lewis. Cool. Okay, hit me up. Like I said, one of the first five people in the chat I mentioned earlier, hit me up for a Sunstreak Wars slash Crystal. If you are the three members mentioned now, hit me up for a Sunstreak Wars slash Crystal as well. Okay, let's hit this up. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, build bots. That's what we really need to scout. So we've got uh, two healing build bots next to the HQ. We've got an anti stun, so no really point in taking Bumblebee there either. Um, we've got anti tracks, so there's no point in taking tracks really. Where's the other billbot? There it is at the bottom. And that's anti tracks as well. So we can use blades, there's no anti hack. So, um, oh my god, this thunderstorm there as well. So if you do, if you know Sanya, tell them they need to change that. So we could track that area right there. That's going to get loads. It's not anti-air either. So that is going to be absolutely demolished. We can hack that area. We can hack that area. So we've got to use our ability points at the bottom. Um, and we've got to uh, keep um, our ability points low, the usage for the bottom. And... Um, We've got to not use blades, but there's only mortars there, no point in using blades, so that's the idea. Uh, once we've, we need to walk from left to right, so we need to take this out pretty early, um, and then we need to, them to walk um, left here. So gunners need to be down here. Uh, I'm going to throw Blossom's minions to take this out, take this out with um, jet fire, um, and then I'm going to let them walk through the base. I might even take sludge, actually, to get rid of that wall piece there, so they can actually walk through. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, we don't really need sea spray that much, but we'll take him. But we'll take blades definitely. So blades is going in. Um, we need jet fire in, so jet fire can go in. We don't really need laser Artemis. Um, so maybe we take sludge with us as well. So we can take sludge in there. Um. Do I need sea spray for once? I'll take him anyway. I can take a good section out with sea spray. So we'll take combiner just to avoid the combiner. But we can just take a defense all with us. Give it a go. Combiner there we engaged. go. And let's go. Chris Taylor's put uh, you and Hoist have both moved to Thursdays. Uh, I didn't know the Hoist had moved to Thursdays. Are you sure it's not? He streams on a Wednesday and then on a Thursday he publishes it. I don't know. Let's move to Thursday? I don't know. Um, but yeah. Uh, no grind time. Sadly not. You missed one out of your first answer. Sorry. <laughs> but honestly, I hope you don't win the Sun Chicken Wars Sash Crystal. But I hope you win the gift card. Because you're the only person I think out of my members. Uh, Atari as well. And Simon Hayes haven't uh, won it yet. Has Simon won it? I don't know. I think Atari is quite new. He hasn't won it yet. But I think everyone else has actually won it yet. Apart from grind time. So, um, yeah. Oh, Victor Starsay was put house as the lady stream. Oh, I have to watch it then. Cool. Okay. So let's throw some minions up there. Let's do that there. There we go. And plus minions to the out and if they go upwards. It's all good, they stayed down, put the combiner, but it's all good. It's all good. And there's the combiner there. So there the hack. We might actually avoid the hack actually. Oh that's even cooler. Thanks for being stunned, they've actually avoided the uh, the hack. Need to make sure Blaze stays alive. That's the key bot in all this. In fact, I'm going to hack it right now while I can. Oh, we missed it.
Man, I struggle a bit here now with Chester Con coming out, but hey. Get up a heel bump in the back here, just to keep Wheeljack alive. Because that, uh, Chester Con's targeting him. Now, let's start targeting the minions now, I think. Oh, and I've dropped it too early. Oh, my days. I wanted to just drop the uh, hack bomb and then... Because uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and reflect. This ability back to Chitacon. Uh... Do a bit of damage out here. Oh my days, what is Sea Spray doing? Sea Spray is gone. in front there. You can hack this here. Put minions down there. Get that laser out over there. It went terribly wrong. But, oh, oh, I was, oh, I hate that ability. Should just do it. See, it went terribly wrong. We totally effed that up. And we still did it. <laughs> That's why walls needed proving. Okay, cool. Let's go on to the giveaway. So you see here, we've got a uh, random number generator. So uh, as you can see, it's the uh, it's legit um, site, everything like that. Just so I don't get accused of being uh, biased, whatever. So we have the following people up for available to win the uh, $30 gift card. So the following people, Atari is number one. And this is simply in order of what they are on my YouTube. Simon Hayes is number two. Luke is number three. SG Soundwave is number four. Grind Time is number five. Righteous number six. And Chris Lewis is number seven. So we're literally going to uh, press the generate button. And whoever uh, number comes up uh, will win a $30 gift card. So good luck, everyone. Uh, I hope you win Grind Time. Let's have a look. And the winner is Luke. <laughs> so Grind Time doesn't win again, sadly. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Grind Time. But uh, the winner is Luke. So Luke, um, hit me up on uh, Discord in the members section uh, to claim your uh, $30 gift card. Uh, congratulations and um, thanks for being a member, guys. Um, sorry, Grind Time. <laughs> I feel so bad for Grind Time. It's probably my biggest support of my channel. And he's yet to win the gift card. And everyone else has. It's, it is such a shame. <laughs> I'm sorry, bud. Oh, if I could fix it, I probably would for you next time. But <laughs> it's just random, isn't it? Random number generator. But yeah. Shame. Such a shame. <laughs> Can't transport FFS. <laughs> sorry, bud. <laughs> Well, that is everything for the stream this week on that bombshell. Uh, but, yeah, thanks to everyone for tuning in, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, and watch out for my content. Like, take, we take snippets of the stream and put it throughout the week. But, uh, you know, you can mention it to your guys in your alliance saying, listen, if you can't make the stream, was I started cutting these streams down, making videos out of it. Um, just so that, uh, you know, people can watch uh, little snippets of the stream, not get the whole interaction, but uh, watch the, uh, you know, little bits of uh, information and strategy bits and things like that. Um, 
but yeah, don't forget to hit a like on the video for you uh, for your leave, guys. If you liked anything in the video, and uh, don't forget to be subscribed. Simple as that. We're so close to four thousand subs now. So close, we are getting there slowly but surely. So if you're not subs yet. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Uh, and like I said, if you want to be with any chance of maybe a $30, maybe even $50 gift card, become a Platinum member. Uh, and yeah, uh, until then, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. And peace out, guys.